Greetings folks. For something a little bit different, I'm going to be looking at this Creeland uh, VD98 XPL7C fishing, hunting, camping LED flashlight. Alright, let's open it up and have a look at it. Here we are. It's a odd looking flashlight. It comes in two tubular designs like this. There's the globe and there's the battery and it just screws together. And there it is, it's on straight away. Let's turn it off. Also comes with a USB charging cable and a power adapter there. And that's all, there's no manual, nothing else at all. So uh, I sort of have to work out how to use it myself. There's a bit of information on the Banggood website, of course, so uh, that's where I got my information from. So it's all aluminium, very nicely sealed, highly focused, 10 watt LED. I'll just show you. Push to turn on. It's extremely bright. You shouldn't really look straight at the light. So you have full power. Push again for half power. Push again to turn it off. Double push and you get the strobe. Double push again and you get the uh, SOS signal. And finally, if you push and hold, you can dim the light down from full power down to zero. Push and hold again and you'll take it up to full power again. So it's very versatile, it's very rugged, it's uh, about 850 grams so it's not a lightweight and it has a quarter inch tripod mount on the bottom, it doesn't come with a handle. Two holes for a lanyard there which is probably a very good idea. Now the thing that interests me about this is that it's waterproof to 30 metres so this is going to be a good uh, dive torch basically for recreational dive depths. Uh, the highly focused light is great for diving, for looking under dark ledges, under piers, sort of in wrecks and things like that. Uh, it's not perfect for video because it's highly focused but um, you can easily put some diffusers on the front like that. Also. Uh, you can cut down the light level, but uh, this is uh, a bit of a yellow tinted light, but it has a 62 millimeter thread on the front, so you can buy photographic filters and change the color balance of the light, which is what I'm going to do. I've got a, I think it's an 80B filter on the way with the diffusers on uh, and the light correction filter as well. I should get nice uh, diffuse daylight colored light for uh, underwater video. This is what I've been using for a video light so far. Uh, and this thing weighs about 1.4 kilograms. It's halogen globe, it, it uses these horrible old C-size nickel metal uh, hydride batteries. Um, it's just terrible, <laughs> really doesn't work all that well. So old technology, new technology. This is gonna be great to uh, try underwater. But let's have a look at the specs a little bit more before we ta go taking it underwater. Uh, full aluminium construction, 1220 lumens, 35 hours running time. It uses seven 18650 uh, 2100 milliamp hour batteries, which are sort of sealed into this back section here. And it uses the Cree XP-L 10 watt LED. As I said, this is the 7C, which is a, which is a sort of a warm tone LED. You can get a, a blue tone as well. Uh, and there's a link on the Bang Banggood website if that's what you want. But this warmer one, filtered to daylight, will be perfect for me. So this is how I'm going to use it with the SJ Cam SJ8 Pro. I've just bent up a bit of an aluminium bracket here, and that is just going to screw on the top. Thus, now just as a comparison, uh, this is a, a fantastic video setup. This is what I used to use, uh, a big Icolite housing for a Nikon SLR with a nice big dome port on the front. That weighs in at about eight kilograms and many thousands of dollars. And I predict this setup is gonna do much better video than that one. The other setup's fantastic for still photography, but uh, video, this is gonna be the better setup for sure. For diving, I've also used these little torches as well. This is sort of just a little utility torch 
not really any good as a video light. It's kind of okay for lighting up sort of little areas, but if I want to light up a, a nice big colourful display of sponges or something like that, this should be much better. Here it is charging, and you can see that uh, plug in the USB cable to the power outlet and into the unit, and there's a three-level indicator LEDs to show the charge level and a flashing LED. And here's what it looks like outside. This is about a half an hour before uh, darkness. It's quite dark. Uh, here we are turning on full, full bore and you can see it's a ridiculously bright and narrow focused beam. That's on full power. Yellow tinge in this sort of bluey late evening light. And clicking down to low power, which might be a good option for the video, depending on the exposure underwater. We'll check that out anyway. And there's the strobe function. And pushing and holding to, to uh, steplessly dim it right down to zero, to whatever level you want. You might have noticed earlier when I first put the two halves together, the o-ring actually popped out of the groove and uh, sort of jammed in the join that would be disastrous if you were taking it underwater because that would mean it uh, wouldn't be waterproof at all the problem is that o-ring is uh, a bit dry so you really need to get some o-ring grease uh, this is for underwater housings and what you do is you just get a tiny little bit of grease not much at all on your finger sort of rub it around and then just moisten then just sort of lightly lubricate the o-ring and just make sure that there's no grit or animal hairs in the groove or on the o-ring or anything like that so attention to this is vital for any sort of underwater photography year otherwise it's going to fill up with water so a little bit of grease there not much at all if there's any blobs on it now uh, you put too much on you really just need to make it shiny and now when you put it back together should slide on nice and smoothly and not catch. There we go, that's that's much smoother now. So lubricate your o-rings but not too much. My 62mm 80A filter has arrived but unfortunately it's not quite the right size. Uh, the thread, I thought it was 62mm thread but it's actually about 64 or 65 unfortunately. That's okay, it's no drama. So I've got two diffusers there that I'll put in from my other torch that was. You could use any sort of um, translucent plastic. There's the filter. It does sit in there quite nicely so I'll be able to hold it on. I'll just make up a little holder to hold it on front of the torch there and um, hopefully that is a nice daylight balanced light. All that's left to do now is uh, wait for good diving conditions and take it underwater.